Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, how to measure printed circuit board design decay. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod and I'm a senior market development engineer for Rogers Corporation. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about how to measure the design decay for printed circuit boards that are used in high frequency applications. Now to begin with, the term design decay is a term that Rogers has been using for a number of years now and it really refers to the dielectric constant as a, as a circuit would perceive that. And what I mean by that is Rogers and many other the suppliers of laminates will do dielectric constant testing, DK, on the raw substrate itself. And that test is usually a fixture type of test. And it's testing raw materials properties. However, this type of test does not capture some of the circuit attributes uh, that the design DK testing will capture. So if you need more information on design DK, there is another Coonrod's Corner that is titled, What is Design DK? And that will give you much more information. On the Rogers Technology Support Hub, there is a software that's free for download, and that uh, software is the Rogers DK calculation software. Also, I call it MDPL, Microstrip Differential Phase Length Method, and that is using microstrip transmission lines, and as the name implies, you're doing phase measurements to determine the dielectric constant of the circuit that's being tested. Now, the test method for design decay is a very simple test method. It is a differential length method where you have circuits of the same exact design, same material, same everything, and the only difference is the physical length. One circuit tested is much longer than the other. It's usually a three to one ratio for length difference. The circuits being tested, as I said, are identical in every way except length. Uh, they are microstrip transmission lines and they are uh, designed to be 50 ohm microstrip transmission lines. And what's done is the uh, circuits are connectorized and the connectors are connectors that are not soldered, so they are field replaceable connectors that make contact by pressure. That way you can use the exact same connectors on the shorter circuit and also the same connectors on the longer circuit. Now the method that we use to determine the dielectric constant from the circuit testing is shown here. The formulas shown here are really uh, based on the microstrip phase response formula on the left and then what we do is rearrange that formula in the middle to account for circuits of two different lengths. The different length is the delta L and the variable delta phi is the difference in phase angle measurement of these circuits at a specific frequency F. And then C is uh, the uh, speed of light in free space. Then we rearrange that equation to get the effective dielectric constant of the circuits being measured and that is the measured effective dielectric constant. After that, what we'll do is use the software that's downloadable from the Rogers Technology Support Hub website, and that software uses closed form equations from a very well-known paper, Hammerstead and Jensen. So the software will read in input the, of the circuits that were measured on the network analyzers, the phase measurements for the short circuit, the, the circuit measurements for the long circuit, and then from that, uh, the user will also input the circuit dimensions, the conductor widths, the substrate thickness, uh, everything that defines the circuit. And then when the calculation is done, the software will essentially do a convergence routine to converge to the dielectric constant of the material based on all the information that's read into it. And that's for one specific frequency. Then the software will increment to the next frequency and go through the same process all over again. And what you get out of that is a dielectric constant versus frequency curve. This picture is a screenshot of the software that is showing the output of the measurements of these circuits. And uh, you can see the table of information on the right is frequency versus effective dielectric constant and also frequency versus dielectric constant. And that is from the measurements taken on the long and short circuit from the network analyzer that's read into the software. And it's also based on the circuit dimensions that the user has inputted. Now you can also click on the tab for graphing data in, uh, in graphing form. So then you can see the graph of dielectric constant versus frequency. And then also this software will generate an output file that is a comma delimited file that can be read into an Excel spreadsheet. And from that you can use the Excel functions to generate a graph of dielectric constant versus frequency as shown here. In this graph, you can see that the frequency is a very wide range uh, where we start at 0.1 gigahertz or 100 megahertz and we go all the way out to 110 gigahertz. And this is the phase response uh, measurements uh, and giving us the dielectric constant of the material, in this case 5 mil RO3003 material, from about 100 megahertz to 110 gigahertz using a uh, network analyzer that's capable of this. 
Also on the Rogers Technology Support Hub website, there is a manual for the software, so you can download that manual and it will give you more instructions for using the software and also for getting accurate measurements. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you very much for your time. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.